Hello Vol Investors, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about cloud error and why I believe that cloud error is undervalued. We're going to address its revenue growth rates, then we're going to talk about its non-GAAP gross profit margins and how that lends itself towards it having very strong cash flows. Then we're going to bring this all together and talk about its valuation and address the fact that actually, surprisingly, cloud error is quite undervalued. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to check out my marketplace on Seeking Alpha. It's called Deep Value Returns. I'll tell you the stocks I own and why we're balanced argument for the stocks I own. You're welcome to do a totally free trial to see if you find stocks that suit you. So let's get started. The big thing here is that Cloudera's revenue growth rates have been dwindling down quite aggressively. So if you think about it, when Cloudera merged and closed the merger with Horton, Horton Works, it really had that bump in inorganic growth, as you can see here on the left side of the graph, but then it's been quite difficult for Cloudera's organic growth to come by. And you can see that as we go right now into Q321, it's really pointing towards a top end 6% growth rates and then looking out to Q4, assuming that it doesn't really grow substantially more, its growth rates are going to come down and it's going to be about 2% on the top line. So it's really not a high growth story anymore. That's what the, everyone is looking at. But as we look beyond that, what I think is quite important is that to focus on the fact that its non-GAAP gross profit margins hit approximately 81% last quarter so q2 21 it was approximately 81 percent but what's even more important is that the actual underlying business the actual cloud platform it's actually came up as 89 percent so you got the service which often service the service is um just like consulting services so that's really a low margin business and that kind of is not really contributing much but what investors should focus on is that the recurring business of Cloudera came up as 89%. So that's really, really quite attractive. And that's a step up from 86% last time, last year. So you're having a business that is pretty much just dropping to the bottom line and the customer is really stuck into that business. So that's a sticky business model. And I think that this is part of the reason why this the story is actually more bullish than in, than investors initially appraise. And you can see this sticky business model translating into its cash flows. So you can see that in for the first half of 21, its cash flows hit 100 million, 101 million, which is a dramatic improvement from negative 22 million in the same period a year ago. So if going into Q3 21, if Cloudera can indeed continue to report some positive cash flows, I think that, this, that there is a noteworthy story here to follow. If, if the cash flow comes out quite strongly for Q3 and there's the imagine that in Q4 it will also be quite strong, you'll see that that narrative will very slowly change towards focusing investors' attention on the cash flow generation of the business. Now, just briefly, so Cloudera has been priced at four times forward sales, okay? Now, if you compare with a peer Domo, Domo is, has the its service business, its its platform business is hitting 80% non-GAAP gross profit margins compared to 89% for Cloudera. So, Domo's non-GAAP profit margins are not as high as Cloudera's. The growth for both companies into next year very very similar, whereas Domo's being priced at five times forward sales and Cloudera is only being priced at four times. So I think that if they're able to persuade investors to start thinking about those cash flows, I think there's a noteworthy story here worth following. As always, thank you for listening. I'll see you next time.